Since widespread screening programs for cervical cancer were developed, the incidence and mortality from that cancer have decreased by almost 50%. There are about 11,000 new cases of cervical cancer diagnosed annually in the United States, with about 4,000 deaths. Up to half of all the women who are diagnosed annually with cervical cancer have never been screened, and another 10% have not been screened for five years. Cervical cancer is directly related to HPV infection. Infection with a high-risk HPV subtype is a risk factor for developing an abnormal pap smear and, ultimately, cervical cancer. HPV infection is very common, especially in young women and adolescents. However, women under 30 with intact immune systems are able to clear the virus in most cases. So, although HPV infection is necessary for cervical cancer to develop, the vast majority of women with HPV infection will not develop abnormal pap smears or cervical malignancy. The American Committee of OBGYNs developed a new evidence-based recommendation system for cervical cancer screening. These recommendations were published at the end of 2009. The following are the most important of these recommendations. First, cervical cancer screening should commence at age 21. This recommendation is based on the low incidence of cervical cancer among women under age 21. The incidence of dysplasia among this age group is not uncommon, but it rarely progresses to actual malignancy. Evaluation and treatment of dysplasia among adolescents may also cause undue anxiety and complications from cervical procedures. Recent data has shown a relationship between LEAP procedures the most commonly used excisional procedure for CIN 2 and 3, and subsequent preterm deliveries. The next recommendation is that cervical cytology screening should take place every two years for women between the ages of 21 and 29, and every three years for women over 30 who have had three consecutive normal pap smears. The progression of cervical cancer is very slow, and large studies have not shown a significant benefit of screening that occurs every year versus every other year in young women. The benefit of screening every two versus every three years in women over 30 is small. Women who are high risk, for example, infected with HIV, immunosuppressed, previously exposed to DES, or previously treated for CIN2, CIN3, or cervical cancer, should continue to have annual screening. The next recommendation acknowledges that both liquid-based and conventional pap smears are appropriate to use as a screening method. The liquid-based pap smear is not better than the conventional slide. A 2008 meta-analysis compared liquid-based pap smears to conventional slides and found that they were equivalent in detection of HSIL. A large 2009 randomized control trial included almost 90,000 women in the Netherlands and did not find any difference between liquid-based pap smears and conventional pap smear slides for detection of CIN1, CIN2, CIN3, or cervical cancer. Co-testing with liquid-based pap smear and HPV is appropriate for women over 30, but should not be done more frequently than every three years. In addition, women who have had a total hysterectomy for a benign condition do not need further cervical cytologic screening. The following are level B recommendations. First, cervical cytology testing may be discontinued at age 65 to 70 in women with three consecutive normal pap smears and no abnormal screening tests within the last 10 years. Cervical cancer, again, is very slow growing and most older women do not have new risk factors. In women who have a new partner or the potential to acquire a new HPV infection, continued sporadic surveillance may be acceptable. Next, sexually active women under 21 should be counseled and tested for sexually transmitted infections and also counseled about condom use and contraception. And lastly, women who were treated in the past for CIN2 CIN3 or cervical cancer should have continued annual screening for 20 years.